This is the Czech Republic, and this is its railway network, one of the densest railway networks in the world. As of October 2025, it is speed limited to 160 km or 100 miles per hour, meaning that the country has no high speed railways just yet. Well, except for one. This is the Prague to České Budějovice line, one of the most important railways in the whole country. Like the other lines, it is speed limited to 160 km or 100 miles per hour. However, two months ago, on two segments of the track, between the towns of Sudoměřice u Tábora and Votice, and between Soběslav and Doby u Tábora, history was made. On the 31st of August 2025, the Czech Republic saw its first high-speed rail service, technically at least. On that day, the first 200 km or 125 miles per hour track in the country was put into passenger service, and I was there to experience it firsthand. In this video, we'll take a ride on the new 200 km per hour track segment and explore the importance of upgrading railways for the 21st century. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing, it helps out a ton. Thanks and on to the video. The IC591 Pendolino service, which runs from Ostrava in the east of the country, through Prague and then down to České Budějovice in the south, runs once per day. It leaves Ostrava at 5.10 pm, leaves Prague at 8.27 pm and reaches České Budějovice at 10.02 pm. Overall, the service takes 4 hours and 52 minutes from start to finish. The line is served by ČD Class 680 Pendolino tilting trains, since the high-speed track segment only allows tilting train sets to travel at 200 km per hour. Since I live in Prague and I wanted to get back without having to spend the night in České Budějovice, I opted to take the train from Prague to Tábor. The first 200 km per hour segment is thankfully in front of Tábor, so I'd still get to experience the first high-speed service in the country. I got to Prague main train station only a few minutes before departure, courtesy of me taking the wrong metro while going there. But even in those last few minutes before the train departed, it was obvious that the day was an important one for many people. For the government, for transit fans like me, and for the media. There were a lot of journalists still on the platform, people were taking pictures, and the Czech Minister for Transport was also on board. I got on board, and soon enough, we set off for the south of Czechia. A few minutes after departure, a person from the restaurant car came and gave us these Pendolino themed wafer rolls. The ride was going smoothly and about 15 minutes later, we were approaching the first 200 km per hour segment. People were pulling out their phones and recording the screens that showed the train's speed. The train driver made an announcement and suddenly, the speed started to rise above 160 km per hour. The ride got noticeably bumpier afterwards, but the speed kept on rising. It went to 170, then 180, it slowly climbed to 190, then the speed readings went blank, and when they came back on, the screen showed 195. From there, it slowly incremented up, 196, 197, 198, 199, until suddenly, 200. 200 kilometers, or 125 miles per hour. We traveled at that speed for a few minutes, until the train had to slow down to stop at Tabor. In Tabor, me and a lot of other transit fans got off to catch the last train back to Prague. Ultimately, that day was more of a symbolic event. The train went 40 km per hour faster than normal, so not exactly a groundbreaking event. Although it wasn't a monumental event, the speeding up of the line could bring benefits to the population, especially if the upgrades continue and more segments of the line are sped up. Upgrades like these can be very useful because the railway system doesn't need massive, flashy projects in order to see huge improvements. When people think about improving railway systems, the first thing most people's minds come to is all new high-speed rail lines. And don't get me wrong, these are important, especially on main routes with massive demand, such as Prague to Brno in the Czech Republic. However, what's often overlooked is upgrading existing lines to bring them to modern standards, to increase their capacity, etc. One such example is the modernization of the track from Prague to Beroun, located here. This railway, aside from carrying all long-distance trains going from Prague to Poznan and further west, also serves as a commuter rail line for all the towns, villages and suburbs to the southwest of Prague. The modernization of this line aims to raise speeds, improve reliability and improve capacity, which is badly needed on this line, especially during the rush hours. During those, even double-decker commuter trains get absolutely packed with passengers. 
These kinds of upgrades are way less flashy, way less media worthy, but they are no less important than the huge, medialized mega projects, like all new high speed rail lines. Raising the speeds on conventional lines, where building all new, dedicated high speed railways might not make sense, could also be a viable upgrade. One part of railway upgrades that's often overlooked is the supporting infrastructure, such as electrification or signaling and train protection systems. Investments in widespread electrification, or finally bringing the European Rail Traffic Management System online aren't flashy, and their returns aren't immediate, but they're badly needed in order to bring the railways into the 21st century. One may ask, well, why aren't these investments being made then, if they're so badly needed? Probably the largest factor in why necessary track upgrades are often postponed or not done at all is optics for those in power. Unfortunately, one pitfall a lot of democracies face is thinking in election cycles, where decisions are only made in the scope of the four or so years before the next election rolls around. Railway projects are expensive overall, and budgets are limited, and so, elected politicians tend to gravitate towards projects that are easier to sell to the general population. Telling the people, we are building a line that will allow speeds of up to 320 km per hour is easier to communicate and to sell than the idea of modernizing existing infrastructure to make it more efficient, reliable and to allow higher speeds. No administration wants to be the supposedly boring one that apparently didn't do anything, even though the upgrades would help tens, maybe hundreds of thousands of people, just because the individual upgrades wouldn't garner much media attention. This is not to say that all new high-speed rail lines aren't needed, they make a lot of sense in a lot of places, but existing infrastructure cannot be ignored in favor of new, shiny projects. In an ideal world, existing infrastructure would get its necessary investments, and funding would be allocated towards high-speed rail. Unfortunately, in a lot of places today, we are only seeing the latter, which results in things like this. This is Prague, the capital and the largest city of the Czech Republic. This is Kladno the largest city of the central bohemian region. And this is the railway connecting these two cities. It's a single track, unelectrified railway, in the big 2025. 16,000 people commute from Kladno and the surrounding region into Prague every day. And right now, they pretty much have to take a bus or drive, because the rail connection is far from ideal. This creates massive traffic congestion throughout the northwest of the city which propagates to the whole of Prague, as thousands of individual cars make the trip to Prague and back every weekday. Thankfully, the line is finally getting double-tracked and electrified, with a new spur to Prague Václav Havel Airport being built. The completion date of this very overdue upgrade is slated for 2030, so let's hope that that actually happens. Completing this upgrade, and the new spur to the airport, has the potential to alleviate a lot of traffic congestion in the northwest of Prague and beyond since it'll actually provide a viable alternative to road travel to those traveling from Kladno and the surrounding region to Prague. In conclusion, new, shiny projects, like new high-speed railways, are crucial for developing a country and region's infrastructure, but maintaining and upgrading existing infrastructure cannot be neglected, since that can also bring massive, tangible benefits to the region's population and economy. Anyway, thank you so, so much for watching to the end, you're a real legend. If you'd like to support my work, I have a Ko-Fi page with 3 membership tiers, all of which bring you sweet benefits, like early access to my videos. I'd also like to take this time to thank Monday's Last Brain Cell for supporting the channel with the top membership tier. I can't express how grateful I am for the support. Enjoy the bloopers, this has been Tramley and I'll see you next time. Bye! The train went 40 km per hour faster than normal, so not exactly end er- Ah! Uh Railway projects are expensive overall, and budgets are limited, and so, elected politicians tend to- This creates massive traffic congestion th Congestion? Words?